And I think that's a, that's a very important point, and I think it, it, it will change how all of us practice this, this incorporation of, of hereditary testing, taking a much better family history. And as you said, Dan, it's, it's not anymore just whether you're African American or, or you have a family history of prostate. It's, it's all these other, quote, hereditary tumors that we never thought prostate fit into that category. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem, so, you know, you, you, you could put, you test because of treatment for, for the patient determining therapy or probably the more sticky point that maybe many urologist groups are not prepared to handle, but I want your input, Alec, is family counseling. Mm -hmm. So sort of what are you, are you incorporating this routinely in your, uh, in your advanced prostate center, in, in, in your practice in general? So this is, this is the challenge and this is the hurdle that we have. Now we have uh, new guidelines that indicate that, that all, all CRPC patients and other uh, cancer, prostate cancer patients with certain family history should be tested now. And so once you start your test and then the family members of those who test positive should be tested. And so we're, not, we're in the process of trying to implement that and it, the resources in terms of genetic counseling, and it's, it's a challenge. And we, we don't have a good systemized solution yet. I know several months ago, Neil and I were talking with uh, various uh, 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 vendors or in genetic uh, testing company to see if, we, if, if there are some methods that we could facilitate the community urology groups and rolling out and being compliant with the, gui the testing guidelines. Yeah, I know, Neil, you, you, you know, we know the folks at Jefferson last year put together that first comprehensive genetic testing and, and came out with a recent paper to summarize sort of how urologists, especially who are managing prostate cancer, uh, should be looking at this. What sort of genes, again, when, when should you test? Can you? If, Expand yeah. on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So just a couple of comments. So, so yeah. So there's a paper in this month's JCO of that Philadelphia Consensus Conference, and it was really wonderfully uh, instituted by the folks at Thomas Jefferson. The first author is Veda Geary, and 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 William Kelly, Karen Knudsen, Lenny Gamella. So I encourage everybody to take a read of that paper, uh, trying to get consensus. And it was not so easy to always get consensus. Um, uh, getting back to just comments by Alec, if I could for a second, at the LUGPA level, we're going to have three different initiatives this year on hereditary prostate cancer testing with uh, the various vendors that are very ensconced in this field right now. And I think this is incredibly important because we're really at the beginning of the beginning of understanding all of the importance as well as the, some of the challenges to doing hereditary prostate cancer testing. And we don't want to make the same mistakes and we can learn from what's happened in, uh, from our, our breast cancer surgeons and our medical oncologists as it relates to hereditary testing for breast and ovarian cancer, et cetera. So I think it's a very important for our listening urologic audience to, to understand that there's a lot of really great initiatives. Probably the best low hanging fruit, the easiest is just getting a better family history which we've really never done a very good job of. So um, I think these are really important. I'm really excited at the LUGPA level that we're gonna have three different hereditary prostate cancer initiatives and more educational learnings. So I would uh, really highly encourage uh, our, our, the, the urologists in the community that there's, this is something that they really wanna be focusing on.